All right, so chapter 2.10 is a uh, change expresses a percent. Today we're going to wrap up everything from this chapter with a very straightforward process. Uh, in order to understand it, though, we first have to know how to actually create a percentage. So let's look at a couple examples here. Um, if someone makes 7 of 11 shots, you want to know what percent they shot or shoot. Um, the thing is, this is how many they made. This is the total amount. So what we do is we put how many they made out of how many they shot and you simply do 7 divided by 11 and turn it into a decimal that gives me the answer 0 0.636 and keep in mind that to convert this into a percentage we must move this decimal two spot two spots that means I got a 63.6 percent so again if you want to find a percent of something you simply take the success number or whatever number you're looking at divided by the total number and that gives you what you're looking for uh, also, if someone gets 13 out of 16 questions correct on a quiz, you can actually use this with uh, my quizzes also because that's how I grade them. Um, you would say I got 13 out of 16. If you divide that number straight through, 13 divided by 16, getting the answer of 0.812, which for me, I don't go past the uh, second digit, so 81 would be it if I rounded it, and so you would end up with a 81% on that score. So again, in terms of percentage, you take the amount that you're looking for divided by the total. That's how you make a percent. If you are still having issues with this in terms of understanding the basic idea, come to me or whoever your teacher might be and make sure you ask them so they can kind of talk you through it because it's really not that bad. But uh, if that's just not connecting for you, uh, you need to make sure you understand it before you move on because if you don't understand how to make a percentage, then the rest of this lesson is going to give you some troubles. The essential question today is, what is the most important part of finding the percent change? Uh, considering the fact that it's called percent change, change, the most important part is determining how much the value changed. Once you have identified this, you simply divide it by the original amount. Um, the general formula for percent change is simply amount of change divided by the original. People mess up a lot because they find the amount of change and they divide it by the new amount, but it's always based off of the original. Keep Think about it like this. If you want the percent change, you want to know how much it changed from what it was, not how much it changed from what it is right now. Again, you always want to compare it to what it was, and so you want to always start with your original amount. Uh, the key things to remember also is that percent change can be a percent increase or a percent decrease. Uh, on our assessment, you are going to have to state whether it was an increase or decrease. And it's not that hard, it's just determined by whether the new value is higher or lower than the original. If something started out as the number 10 and it moved up to the number 15, I think we're good enough to know that this is an increase. If something started out as the number 10 and moved down to the number 5, I think we're good enough to know that as a decrease. But you just have to make sure that you go back and actually answer that part if it's being asked of you in that question. Okay. So other than that, let's get to some examples and let's get out of here in terms of this, this lesson because it is a quick quick lesson. Uh, so one example is say you purchased a car for $5,000 after you fixed it and add some upgrades you're able to sell it for $6,285. They want the percent change. Is it an increase or decrease? We can actually answer this part here first. Uh, if we purchased a car for $5,000 and we're selling it for $6,285 obviously it is an increase. And so that could be part of your answer. Just make sure you officially write it down or give some indication that you know it's an increase. The second thing we have to do is figure out, again, if this is how much I bought it for, that's how much I sold it for. Again, the percent change is how much it changed. So the first thing we must do is take 6285 minus 5,000 to find out that this amount, <laughs> that's not good, 6285 minus 5,000 to find out that the amount changed by 1,285. So again, the first thing I had to do was subtract these two just to find out that the change amount is 1,285. And remember, we compare it to what it was, not what it is, so we want to put that over 5,000. So again, this is your change amount, this is your original amount, divide those two, and you end up with 0.257 which if you convert that is 25.7 percent again increase is what we're talking about here so a 25.7 percent increase is what that price just did and that's all it takes like I said identify the change go back to your original divide the two and go from there if you're looking at something like this and this is more like what your um, math Excel is also going to look like 
uh, original amount 134.7, new amount 83.1, and again it's going to ask for the percent change. First off, notice I started here, I am now at 83. I just kind of want to make a note that this is a decrease, and then I'll go ahead and figure out what the decrease is. So we do 134.7 minus 83.1, which is 51.6. And again, we divide that by the original amount. So what it was originally, which is 134.7. So again, this calculator does it for me. 51.6 divided by 134.7 gives me 0.383. Which, if I convert that into a decimal, is 38.3% decrease. That is why it helps to kind of jot down the increase-decrease part first so you can always put it back into your answer and finish it off. Okay. If you had one where it said the original amount is $38, the new amount is $70, again, the first thing we must do is recognize that it started at $38, ended at $7. That is an increase. Second thing we must do is figure out how much did it increase. So $70 minus $38 is $32. Again, that's the amount of change. Now we must divide that by how much it was originally, which is 38. So we do 32 divided by 38, which gives me 84.2 or 0 0.842. And so again, when I shift that over, it is 84.2% increase. And that would be what we are looking at. All right. And then one more of your examples here. We did not talk about directly, but again, using the common sense and, and intuition part, I think we can do this. It says, you approximate the weight of a dog to be 65 pounds. The dog is actually 71 pounds. What is your percent error? Um, in this case here, you have to kind of think, first off, you want your percent error. First off, the error is how far was I off? So we do 71 minus 65, which is 6. So we're off by 6. And again, think about this percent change was based off of where we started because where we started was most important. In this case, what the most important number is would be what the actual number is. So again, it's not what I guessed because who cares what I guessed? I want to base it off of where I should have been. So I'm off by 6 and I should have been at the number 71. And so I do 6 divided by 71 to get the answer of 0 0.084 which actually is 0 0.085 when I round it because notice that 5 is going to bump it up. And so we have an 8.5% error. And of course we were low by 8.5%, but again, if they want percent error, they're just asking what the percent error is usually. As long as you're able to say I was too low by 8.5%, you'll be okay. In the end, just remember that our first job is to identify the amount of change or the amount of error. Also remember that we are uh, comparing it to a starting amount or, again, the, um, a, a, the most important amount, which is the actual amount. In the end, just begin to, be, to start looking over all of your notes and material so you can um, be ready to perform on the test this week. Again, you must make sure, especially if you had a bad first test, that you do well on the second test. Keep in mind... If you got, let's say, a low score like some of us got like a 30% on the first test and you currently have a D because for some reason you did well enough on everything else, the good news in having a weighted scale is as long as you don't perform below a 30, then your grade will not drop below a D because your average is going to, to work out. So right now, if your test average is 30, which is actually pretty bad, um, whatever you get on this test is going to average it out. So let's say you get an 80 on this, then what's going to happen is if your first test was a 30, your second test was an 80, you take the average 30 plus 80 divided by 2, you'll end up with a 55% test average, which is actually an increase if you're talking about percent increase. It's a 25% increase in your grade, which is probably going to be like a letter grade or two, just depending on how well you do. That's why I've been so tough on you. That's why I've been trying to get you to make sure you pay attention, because if you perform well on Chapter 2 test, uh, you get a little bit of insurance, and it takes a little bit of pressure off you for the Chapter 3 test, which is also going to be in the first quarter. So, again, just make sure that you practice starting now. Uh, know where to look. Don't worry about doing Chapter 1 homework in your Math Excel 
and in all honesty unless you're reviewing your homework or finishing up questions that you need to get to I would focus more on looking at your tests looking at your quizzes and asking as many questions in class as you can about things that you don't know how to do so use your time wisely remember I'm here in the morning remember that tutoring is after school Monday Tuesday and Thursday at Southeast so uh, just keep that in mind other than that good luck